Unity tutorial. In this one, I'm going to be showing you how and why to use the debugger. And by that, I mean like Visual Studio's debugger and how to use it with Unity and why you should use it. And uh, if you haven't been using it, you know how much time you're going to save. And uh, basically, you can use it for anything. It's um, easy. Logging, waiting for it to compile, going back in, testing, realizing, oh, that's not the thing you needed to debug just logs of the console is good and all but there are some negatives to it such as one the garbage collection and how actually intensive it is for your um for the game to do that um if you've watched my um like memory allocation and efficiency like using the uh profiler you'll see that debug.log is not very good um obviously you want to remove it completely by the time you build your game but for testing it's you know, it's not the end of the world but you probably should st stay away from it um, this is much better and I'll be showing you how to use it. Uh, obviously I want to start off by saying thank you to Paul Robinson and Phil Bourne for being $5 patrons on, um, I should always say that, I should say $5 donators on grammatical sense better, but anyway. Um, if anyone else wants to help support then the link's in the description below. Apart from that, let's get into it. So, uh, here I've just opened up a random project that I use for one of my tutorials. I think this is the Raycast one. Yeah, Raycast one. Okay, so you don't use anything to be honest you don't need a project open to do this you don't have to follow along but you can if you want um this works for any project you know this is clearly um let's say let's give an example okay so we'll go to the i don't know and um here we go we do the if you remember this from last time we click and we calculate where we clicked on the screen to fire raycast in the game uh we create this uh a local variable here to store the data in for the raycast hit and this out hit means that um, the data it gets out of here will be put onto this variable and then we say basically if the thing we hit has the component enemy deal damage what we should do here is let's say we did debug.log let's say we wanted to know where the raycast hit right so we can say hit dot point so that's just a variable I know that exists on hit and it gives you the vector free, basically the position in the world where the raycast, you know, hits. So, for example, if I uh, press play and I click there, that says minus two, 0 0.5, 2.3. So if I uh, create an empty object at um, minus 2.8, um, 0 0.5, minus 2.3, and we go into the scene view, you'll see this game object here is there. Now, if you think about the angle I fired from, that's right, isn't it? I clicked there and that's where it was. Where I got, okay? And that's nice and all, but then let's say you had some code um, where you needed to use a particular variable and it, you, you know, you got problems with it or stuff isn't, um, you, you'll have this a lot with Uh, this should be, you know, equal to five at this point, but it's equal to two or something like that. You'll have problems with variables. You'll have problems all over the point. And what, what you might do is what I see a lot. Of, okay, maybe I need to know about this. So I'll say dot log, uh, bloody blah, I don't know, screen camera. And then uh, debug dot log, hit blah, blah. And then, you know, as I said, debug dot log is not good anyway. And then, you know, spamming it. And then you get confused in the console. What's what? So the debugger okay so this is it's going to be quite a short video um but there are plenty of uses of it so let's say in here um when i click i want to know um the particular position i hit well what you can actually do is you can press this attach to unity button up here so if i press attach to unity and just wait i'll say build started i'll take a few seconds and then it's done okay it's ready when it goes orange and you, know, you can tell it's ready when that button goes to a pause and basically what that means now is it's ready to go so if i press play Everything seems normal. I'm playing the game and it's doing its thing. Whatever I click to shoot, yeah, it's, it's right. Then if I now go to the code and add what's called a breakpoint. Now this isn't just Visual Code, uh, Visual Studio specific. This most, not, not all, but most compilers have uh, breakpoints. Obviously I said, yes, not everyone does, but most, most do. And what it means is you can set a line. So you put a breakpoint on a line, let's say, you know, this line. Okay, so it puts a breakpoint on this line by the red dot. And what that means is, as soon as the code gets to that line, oh, sorry, I hit the microphone. As soon as the um, code tries to execute that line, it will pause. Um, 
it will just stop on this line of execution. So the Unity, like the game will pause automatically. So if I now try and shoot, as soon as I click, pauses and goes here. And now we get some nice help. So as you see, it pauses on this line. And down here, it gives us all our variables. And I'll get into that in a second. Um, then down here, we got warnings. Um, these obviously aren't the, um, these aren't errors, these are warnings. Yeah, so it's just telling you that, yeah, that doesn't matter. Um, in your game, you want to get rid of warnings. Um, there's these jokes about, you know, how like, yeah, you can ignore warnings because they're not going to break your game, but they're generally, you know, stuff that can be optimized via fixing your warnings. Um, but anyway, you see down here, we've got uh, variables, one called this, one called Ray, and one called hit. So the, um, the one called this doesn't, it's not actually a variable. What it means is it's all the variables inside this class. So we've got a base and a screen camera. Um, and as you see, these are just, um, these aren't necessarily things that we've set, if you know what I mean. These are just things that are on this object. Screen camera is um, a class that I think I've made. Uh, where's the project? For some reason, it's not liking me going back to the project. Um, so if I go to the camera, I think because it's pause, it's not letting me. But anyway, um, sorry, here it is, I'm blind. Um, yeah, so we've got the variable screen camera that's set here. Um, and inside that, you can see everything to do with that, all of the camera properties. You can look at every single value of everything in there, it's great. Um, and ray, so ray here, we've, we've defined ray. And as you see, ray has inside of it a direction and an origin. Uh, you can't actually edit code while in debug mode, you have to pause it um, and end because obviously it would mess it up. But as you see, we can actually view the properties inside here and what types they are. So, you know, vector freeze, raycast hit. It just says Unity Engine inside because vector freeze and raycast hits aren't C-sharp specific, they're Unity specific. So they're from the Unity Engine library. Um, if I go into hit, now as you see hit is this that we've made here. We can look at every variable of hit. Um, so you see collider, null, distance, zero, whatever, whatever. Now the reason that is zero or that all these empty values is because it's paused it on this line before the line runs right this is this code hasn't been run yet we haven't actually done the physics raycast um so if i what i can do is i'd have to set a breakpoint on the next line stop there if you look up here you've got a few tools so first of all continue just means play the game right so continue give it a second we're playing the game again click oh this line's been called again we'll stop then if you press you see here they're all different ones so show next statement we'll go to the next one but you know there is no next one um step into will basically go inside a class or if you know physics this might go inside of the no it'll just go inside of the if statement um but the thing is we aren't actually executing this line if we if we did um step over it'll go over ifs and then if we press step out it'll go outside the if and it'll just continue um so if we now uh, press continue go back to the code if we go to the shooter we have moved this now. Oh no, we haven't, sorry. We'll put that there. Um, we'll go shoot something. Pause the execution. So if we now see this um, step into, you can actually just go to, um, all right, let's say we wanna step into this um, if, okay. If I go to the hit now, we actually have the data on the hit because it's been filled in now. So as you see, the collider, uh, we collided with cube, which is a box collider, unity engine, whatever. Uh, distance, it's 4.2, you know, you get all that value. You get all the values down here. Now I know on the um, recording, this might be small, but you know, you can look on your own. Um, I can make this bigger, but it won't actually size up the text or anything. I don't know if you can, you can't really zoom into the text. But yeah, it has all the data down here that you can access and you can look inside everything, you know, everything you'll ever need is down here in, the, in this. It's very, very helpful. Um, Let's say, for example, um, what do we expect, all right? Um, if we can press continue and we get rid of this breakpoint. All right, so we're gonna have an object in this. Where are the enemies? Here they are. So if I um, like move the camera, so control shift F. All right, so as you know, if I click on these, they take damage. So if, how about if I had a breakpoint inside the enemy thing uh, where it deals damage, okay? Let's add a breakpoint here. Now, actually, it doesn't put it on the line. If, if you click here, it'll put it on the next line. It doesn't do it on the actual function call line. 
Because if you think about it, this isn't a line of code which gets executed as such. This is just the container for the thing. This, this, anything inside here will get executed. So we'll put the breakpoint there and we'll go shoot him. So before it deals the damage, it's going to say, all right, so we have all the data on this. So we have, um, you know, the current health, uh, max health is 100, health bar is the slider. We've got everything set. Then if you see uh, damage, damage is a variable which we've been passed in and that's 20. So we can actually see when this function gets called what damage is just about to be dealt. So we can say, okay, yep, yeah, 20. All right, and step into, that's just another way of going to the next uh, line really. Um, all right, we don't really have anything new here. So we can go step into, check def. Now, if you see step into, it won't go to update health bar, it'll go into check def. It'll show you the next line that gets executed. So you can actually go through each line one at a time to see what gets executed or what order stuff gets executed in. So if health is less than zero, uh, it doesn't call it because health is not less than zero. Next, check def, update health bar. It does that line, goes back, done. And then it just continues till the end. And because it's an update, you know, all the updates will just get called basically. If you just kept going through, it just shows you all the updates are getting called. All right, continue. Boom. So if I now just get rid of this breakpoint and press continue, I'm going to get him low enough. All right. So I think he's on 20 health now. So if I put that back in, so uh, here, and shoot him. All right, so you expect it to uh, go into. We got, we got 20 damage down here. Uh, enemy 2 is the thing, the enemy. So we're going to do that. We're going to check death. If health is less than zero, equals zero. Oh, look, because it is, it's actually gone inside to execute this code now. So we're going to destroy game object. Now, it's now going to run all the code that's remaining on this... Uh, in this frame and when it's done the object is destroyed so we should never be able to go back to it because if you look in here the object's gone um maybe when we press continue sorry yep it's gone so yeah there we have it there's not actually much else to explain to be honest it's all you need to know you can put breakpoints on lines you can um, pause execution of code you can look into variables um whatever you need um oh what's this oh that doesn't matter uh, when you want to go out of this debug mode, just press the stop button there, and then you can just press it back again. I think F5 is the same. If we press F5, um, yeah, I think that's the same, to be honest. It's just uh, another way of doing that, but, you know, press the button or press F5. Um, yeah, you should probably use this in every single Unity project you do. It's not like anything you have to add. You're just using VS Code, add a breakpoint. Um, if I was you, I would run your game every single time whenever you test it with debug mode on. There's no reason not to. And it means that, unless someone has a reason not to, but I don't think there is one. Um, it's much, much better than doing debug.logs. And you can actually add them in and the rate points in and test different things whilst in runtime. You don't have to like stop, change, compile, go back. You know, you can do it all at once. Um, it just helps you fix bugs so, so much faster and just basically it helps you be more productive it's it's insane it's you know you should use it all the time i'm surprised i didn't make a video on this sooner i just assumed people would use it but i've never really seen anyone do it like on any other youtube videos so i thought you know people might want to see this so if you work with or you know people who um use unity or i mean to be honest this is just generally for any programming generally you should use debug mode um but yeah if you know anyone that uses unity then obviously suggest this video to them um because this is very helpful uh, obviously, when I first found out about debug mode, just in coding in general, I was like, oh, well, that's like super helpful. I mean, to be honest, I think when I first heard about it, I was kind of like, nah, it can't be that good. You know, you can just trial and error. Then I realized, you know, why? You just waste so much time. Like when you can do this, it, it saves you, you know, so much faster. Like, for example, in my game right now, I have um, a panel system where you uh, go onto like a main hub menu and across the top, you've got like um, inventory, character, um, spell book, you've got all the different panels. I'm redoing the UI and I had this problem where uh, if I pressed B for bags or I for inventory, you know, it would go to the bags and if I pressed P for spell book, it wouldn't, it would just not work. So rather than debug.logging all the different things to see why this isn't going to here or what's going to there, I just put it in debug mode and then um, pause the execution on the line that changes to the other panel and I saw, oh, that variable's wrong, okay. And when I saw that it's wrong, I can go back to where it sets it and I'm like, oh, okay, that's the problem, done. So in, in one test of pressing play, I figured out the entire problem and fixed it rather than play. Okay, it might be that. Pause, debug.log. Okay, compile, play. Oh, wait, that wasn't it. You know, it's just a waste. So 
I know this video is being more of a talky one, there's not been much to show, but you know, all you need to know in terms of the practicalities is, you know, press attach to Unity and run your game and put breakpoints in by clicking on this bar at the side. Or if you, so for some reason, don't or can't, want, uh, can't do that, you would just select your line, right click, and breakpoint. Insert breakpoint. Personally, I don't actually know what a trace point is, um, but I know what a breakpoint is, so, you know. Um, oh, why can't it be added at this point? Um, breakpoint could not be added at this location. All right, apparently you can't actually just do it on setting a variable. I mean, I guess that makes sense. I don't know, that's weird. But anyway, yeah, you can do it practically anyway, you know, just go set them, don't, don't overdo it. Um, it's not a problem, it's just, you know, it's easier to put one near where you need, to, at the start of where you need to check, and then just go step into, step into, um, step over, whatever. Depends what you wanna check, so. Yeah, if you haven't already, obviously like and subscribe, it'd mean a lot. Uh, check out the Patreon link down below. Uh, but apart from that, thanks for watching, and goodbye.